Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture, we will discuss the female reproductive system. It's part of the genital system. As we mentioned before, the main determining factor for uh, sex determination or identification is the Y chromosome. Presence of Y chromosome means this is genetically male embryo. Absence of Y chromosome it will result in a female embryo. which is uh, the female embryo is XX having XX uh, sex chromosome complement. These are the organs we will talk about the ovary, the uterus and the vagina and the fallopian or uterine tube. The female reproductive organs are the ovaries and the genital bugs. The second part in the female genital development in the external genitalia and we will talk about it in the next lecture. Let's talk about the development of the ovaries. The primitive absence of Y chromosome will result in the following that the primitive sex course will dissociate into irregular cell clusters and these clusters contains groups of primitive germ cells they occupy the medullary part and later on they are replaced by vascular stroma which forms the ovarian medulla the surface epithelium in the ovaries gives rise to in the female gonad gives rise to cortical cores as we have mentioned before that in 44 plus xy this is a genetically male embryo the y influence will affect the indifferent gonad to form tests which in the testes we have medullary cords develop and there is no cortical cords and there is thick tunica albuge. In the absence of Y, which is in a female embryo 44 plus XX sex chromosomes, this will induce the indifferent gonad to form ovary. And in the ovary, the medullary cords degenerate, the cortical cords develop, and there is no tunica albuge. This is the indifferent stage of the gonads or indifferent gonad, which appear as longitudinal ridges on each side in the poster uh, posterior abdominal wall adjacent to the mesonephros. This transverse section through this line, we will see this image on the right side. We have the genital ridge, dorsal mesentery, and the mesonephric ridge. We have the mesonephric duct. The excretory uh, tubules of the mesonephric of the mesonephric system in the glomerulus. This is the indifferent state, and this uh, this state there is no male female morphologic features of the gonads. And in this image, we have the uh, primordial germ cells that form from the epiblast and they uh, found spread among the endodermal cells in the wall of yolk sac. Here on the right side they start to migrate through the dorsal mesentery of the hind gut to reach the uh, the gonads, the indifferent gonad, to form the primitive sex cords. Until this, till this stage, this is an indifferent gonad. It is not a male or female. This is a three-week 
embryo and this is the cross section or transverse section through lumbar region of six week embryo showing the indifferent gonad. So until the six week, we don't know this is a male gonad or female gonad. Is it a testis or ovary? Some of the primordial germ cells are surrounded by cells of primitive sex cores here. This image in A and B showing the development of the ovary, how it develops. And we have said that the primitive sex cords dissociates into irregular into irregular cell clusters and uh, this occupy the medullary part of the ovary later on it's replaced by vascular stroma forming the uh, ovarian medulla these are degenerating medullary cords okay the surface epithelium proliferates and continue to proliferate in the seventh week, it will give rise to cortical cords, which you penetrate into the underlying mesenchyme, but remain close to the surface. These are the cortical cords. Okay. Uh, in the third month, Fischer tell it, these cords. You know, B split into isolated cell clusters, and these cells, cells in these clusters, continue to proliferate and begin to surround each ogonium, okay, each primary oocyte is surrounded by these cells, epithelial cells called follicular, follicular cells. Together, the orgonia, the primary site, and the follicular cells, they are uh, constituting the primordial follicle. So, image A at seventh week, transverse section of an ovary at the seventh week, showing the degeneration of the primitive sex cords or the medullary cords. And formation of the cortical cords. The B, this is the ovary, and the genital ducts. Okay, in the fifth month, Shahr al Khans. Note the degeneration of the medullary cords and also the, the excretory mesonephric tubules or the efferent ductules do not uh, join or contact the reed do not communicate with the reed cortical zone of the ovary if you have groups of ogonia or primary oocytes surrounded by follicular cells and if you have groups of primordial follicles Degenerates some paramesonephric duct or malarian, it develops further, and you will see you know, this is the ovary containing the follicles, and this is the fimbria and this uterine tube. This is the suspensory ligament of the ovary, and here we have the ligament of the ovary proper. Genital ducts, we mean by the genital ducts, the uterine tube or fallopian tube and the uterus, the corpus of the uterus and the cervix, and the upper part of the vagina or vaginal fornix. The presence of the ovary will result in secretion of estrogens including the material 
three the binomaga and placental sources and this region released from the ovary all of this the estrogen hormone will result in stimulation of paramesonephric ducts and the paramesonephric ducts will form the genital female genital ducts the trying to the uterus and the upper portion of the vagina and also it stimulates external genitalia female which is labia clitoris and lower portion of the vagina all of these are stimulated by the presence of estrogen and absence of testosterone and MIS mullerian inhibiting substance uh, after the ducts fuse in the midline a broad transverse uh, pelvic fold okay is a peritoneal fold is established this fold which extends from the lateral extends from the lateral sides of the fused paramesoreflex ducts so in the phenomena, this is the transverse section through an embryo and here as we see the regenerative ridge the mesonephric excerpitory tubule in B we have for a mesonephric ducts coming to fuse in the midline when they fuse the broad ligament of the uterus is formed and uh, the uterine tube lies in the upper part of this ligament and the ovary lies on its posterior surface the uterus and the broad ligaments they divide the pelvic cavity into utero rectal pouch and uterovesical pouch So uh, A and B, they show the paramesoreflex ducts approaching each other in the midline. In C, they fuse, and the result of the fusion, there is a transverse fall is formed, as we mentioned, is a broad ligament of the uterus, and the bonnets lie in the posterior surface, or posterior aspect of this broad ligament. On its upper border lies the uterine. Uh, the mesonephric ducts degenerates. As you see here, in this is a female reproductive organs of an adult, the uterus, fallopian, monitoring tubes, the ovaries, suspensory ligament of the ovary, ligament of the ovary proper. We have this is the broad ligament of the uterus. On its upper border is the uterine tube. On its posterior surface lies the ovaries. And here also, ovary fibrillo of the fallopian tube. This is uterine tube and ligament of the ovary proper, suspensory ligament of the ovary. In this image you see in the upper left side we have five to six week embryo in the indifferent stage of gonads. We have just gonadal ridge, uh, mesonephros, mesonephric duct, and cloaca. In the absence of Y chromosome, so in the absence of testosterone and MIS, molecular inhibiting substance. In the presence of estrogen, female gonad will develop. So, absence of Y will result in developing female gonad ovaries, and the absence of testosterone and MIS will result in stimulation of the paramesonephric duct to develop.
and the Mesoamerican uh, African doctor or Wolfian dot degenerates. This is in eight to nine weeks. At birth, we have this picture. The ovaries are well formed, and all the uterine and uh, the uterine tube or the female genital ducts are formed. Uterine tubes, the uterus, its uh, corpus and cervix, and the upper vaginal. Uh, the upper uh, the vaginal fornices or the upper portion of the vagina all of these are formed by paramesonephric uh, duct we will see how the lower portion of the vagina is formed the molecular and the hormonal regulation of the female reproductive system the ovaries, we have the primordial germ cells, so they have to reach the gonadal ridge. And because they don't have Y chromosome, they carry XXX chromosomes, they will result in formation of uh, ovaries or female gonads. WNT14 is a sex determining factor for female to influence the gonadal ridge to form the ovaries. And the ovaries, in the ovaries we have germ cells which form the primary oocyte and plus the follicular cell. How the genital ducts are formed? The follicular cell plus the maternal blood plus the placental secretion, they secrete estrogen. And the estrogen result in mesonephric duct regression or suppression. Suppresses the mesonephric duct or Wolfian. So the Wolfian doctor is a mesonephric that degenerates in female. Except remnant parts, the apophoron and baroforon uh, cranially and the Gardner cyst caudally in the wall of the vagina or the uterus. So the mesonephric duct or Wolfian duct suppressed in the female by the action of estrogen which is secreted from the follicular cell maternal blood and placental secretion. Also absence of testosterone and malarian inhibiting substance MIS or anti-malarian hormone. Absence of these hormones will result in development of paramesonephric duct, malarian duct, which forms the female genital ducts, which are the uterine tubes, the uterus, its corpus and cervix, and the upper vaginal part, the vaginal forest. Here of the vagina, and it has a dual origin. As we mentioned before, the paramesonephric ducts, they fuse at their tips, caudal tips, they form a solid tip. This solid tip, when it contacts the urogenital sinus, or shortly after it contacts it, there they are uh, two solid evaginations, the coanina, in the pelvic part of the urogenital sinus, with the coanina, two evaginations, is my sinovaginal box, and they proliferate to form vaginal pellet. Then the proliferation will continue the cranial end of the vaginal blade here with only the linear distance between the uterus and the urogenital sinus. Now, uh, later on in the development, the vagina is formed with two origins, vaginal forenses from the paramesonephric malarian ducts and the lower part from the urogenital, from the sinovaginal bulbs and the vaginal plate after canalization. So uh, these are sagittal sections of uterus and vagina at different stages of development. These are nine weeks, and here at the end of the third month, near the shahr al Newborn vagina is well 
month. Here, a coronal view of the development of the vagina, formation of the uterus and vagina. Uh, this is at nine weeks, and here at end of the third month, here at New York. Nine weeks out disappearance of the uterine septum in the Bidaya and Paramusinifric ducts they fuse Maba Ipomo Yamal uterine canal will code the tip Itamalina and vaginal fornices and the upper portion of the vagina. The uterine septum disappear at the end of the third uh, month. The sinovaginal bulbs appears. Lhuma, the marilena, the vaginal plate, and they appear from. They develop from the urogenital sinus. Once the tip of the paramyxonephric ducts contacts the urogenital sinus, the total evagination, as meaning the urogenital sinus, the sinovaginal bulbs, lhuma, the nimma, they grow on proliferate for emerald vaginal plate. We see the tola, then more. Then this will increase the zillion and the zahamadin and the uterus will be regenerated signs. In other words, the newborn, the uterus is fully formed, the vaginal forenses. And the lower part of the vagina, and here we have the hymen. The fornix is the upper portion of the vagina. They are formed by vacuolization. We have some vacuolization of this paramyxonephric tissue. Here, a tip of the paramyxonephric ducts. Here, we have the vaginal fornix. The lower part of the vagina, the lower, in the beginning, becomes solid tissue. We have some vacuolization. We have the fornix. Lower part of the vagina is going to form by vacuolization or canalization of the sino vaginal bulbs and the covalent in the urogenital sinus. Now, in, in this image, I show by the abnormalities of the female reproductive system. Genital female genital system. Here it line defects vaginal and cervical defects. So in this image we have the abnormalities of the uterus and vagina. In A we have the uterus the delphi with double vagina. In B we have uterus arcuatus. Uh, uh, characterized by indentation at the fundus, the fundus of the uterus into uterine cavity. C is the uterus by cornice, the uterus endo, maximally used in a uterine septum. Here it is the resistant, you know, you know. Will have normalities due to persistence or yeah, persistence of the uterine septum or obliteration of the lumen of the canal. Here we have the septum was right to head and the two lumen, uterine lumen, two uterine cavities, and one vagina. In the uterus we have two uterine cavities, two services and two vagina. In D, we have uterus bicornis, unicolis, with one rudimentary hole. Now, has a separate, complete separation septum, uterine septum. We use a minimum bigger round, low the unicolis. Uh, by cornice, eonicolis with one rudimentary horn and then one cavity 
connected to the vaginal lumen. The other cavity is isolated from. In E, we have cervical atresia. The cervical uh, cavity is obliterated. And the cervical atresia. Here we have vaginal atresia. The vaginal, the vaginal lumen is obliterated. But the upper part of the vagina is open. The uterine lumen is open. Cervix is open. But and the upper part of the vagina is open, but the lower part is atrophic. The uterine didelphis or bicornis, in the end, there is lack of fusion of the paramyxonephric ducts. In the paramyxonephric ducts, ma has a lot fusion. كفاية لغاية منه يعمل لنا normal uterine cavity حصل لهم fusion تحت لكن فوق no fusion هنا برضو most of it not fused only the lower part where the cervix is found فدي extreme form the extreme form the uterus is entirely double عندنا Double uterus, double vagina. The uterine didelphis to uterine cavities and two cervical canals and two surfaces and two vagina. في حالة الفجائنة عندنا هنا دبل فجائنة. The uterus didelphis is double vagina. The meaning is no failure of fusion of the sign of vaginal bulbs. Sign of vaginal bulbs. Ma has a little fusion. And here, the vaginal atresia, the sign of vaginal bulbs, even do not develop. Vaginal atresia is due to the vaginal atresia is due to absence of the sign of vaginal bulbs. Failure of the sign of the bulbs to develop. Thank you for your listening and see you in the coming lecture.